Hello, Ava and Christina. Welcome. And anybody else? Yeah. Okay. Who, who, who is, hey, Thor, um, just so I know who's in the meeting, uh, uh, is that Christina on the, the number with the, the phone icon? I, didn't, I don't understand what that yeah, is. It's, yeah, Chris, that, might, that might be me too. This is Mackenzie Claire. I do the copywriting social media. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, you know, it's just good to know who's in the meeting. That's okay, all. Okay, Claire. Thank you. Very nice. Very nice to have you with us. Um, Thank you. Well, welcome, everybody. Uh, first, um, are there any public comments uh, for items not on the agenda? Hearing none, I will move to approve the meeting minutes. I want to revise the agenda. The meeting minutes are actually from our December 3rd meeting, 2020, not our September 17th meeting. Those were already approved. So these minutes are from our December 3rd 2020 meeting. Um, please take a second to look at the minutes and I am looking for a motion to approve the minutes. I'll make the motion. Thank you, Brian. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Jeff. Any discussion on the unapproved minutes from the December 3rd meeting? Hearing none, uh, I'd like to call the vote. All in favor of approving those minutes, please raise your hands and say aye. 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 Anybody against or abstaining? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Thank you very much. Um, our Clean Street Report, uh, just want to start off as saying again, you know, on top of the city services and their street cleanings, um, our Clean Street crew pick up in excess of five tons of trash monthly um, and do a fantastic job of looking after not only our streets and our sidewalks, but um, helping and assisting to keep clean the homeless encampments, wherever they may be, with the requests for, of assistance from those homeless communities. And, um, and they've done a fantastic job of engaging with those, uh, that homeless community and cleaning up what is there that is certainly trash that needs to be cleaned up. The homeless people in our community appreciate it. And uh, Joaqu uh, Joaquin, thanks so much and our officers for engaging with them in such a, uh, in such a, 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 a professional manner, much appreciated. Um, Joaquin, do you, would you like to give uh, your report to the committee? Thank you. Let's see, um, Diana has it. Diana, do you have that? Uh, Sure. I can I can go through our statistic report for the month of January. I'm reporting on, so um, we, the amount of pedestrian pedestrian trash that we had for the month of January was 6.5 tons. For the sidewalk and street sweeping collections, there were approximately 9.2 tons of trash collected. Um, for the bulky item pickups, we had 32 incidences, and within those 32 incidences, approximately 21 of those were uh, needle pickups. For the median maintenance, approximately 16 hours were spent, and then approximately 27 hours were spent pressure washing on bus stops and cleaning up within the encampment areas. Uh, trash cans, it was reported that the trash can at the location of the 7-Eleven, which I think Joaquin, you could probably comment on as well, that that trash can is consistently full. And then uh, there's a list of critical areas that uh, on a monthly basis are touched on. I can read out the locations, however, um, you know, Santa Monica, Santa Monica Boulevard, Lily 858 Lily and Way, um, Santa Monica, it, there's a long list. We had yeah. approximately 11 requests from the website on Cognito Forms. I've been keeping track of that. 
from stakeholders or businesses requesting service. Fantastic. Um, Joaquin, again, um, thanks for taking the tons of trash off our streets and being so react, quick to react to our uh, Cognito reports that come in. I, you get those emails usually before even I do. Um, do you want to just talk about our district and um, this last month and, and your perception of it? Yeah, well, <clears throat> To start off, I, I would just like to say um, thanks to the um, security team. We're, you know, we're, I'm not saying nipping this problem because I mean, it's going to be there, but I, I would say that our, our request, we did reduce a lot for, for the cleanups due to that we're tackling them more often. Now we have a certain day that we go, it's, which is on Fridays. We go and we, um, it's like four officers and most of the times it's like today I had six guys over there, including myself, you know, we finished every single encampment like in less than two hours hmm? what was it no i think that was just cross talk um okay. so continue please so, yeah so and then during the week uh what we've like to start doing now it's like when we clean up once we still go every other day so it's not because we we let it sit for like a whole week and um, it was it was bad for all of us. We were there till like two p.m. It's it was hot already, and it was just like a bunch of like things. I'm pretty sure they shared pictures with you guys, um, AGS, um, with the reports, and it's just. But now it's 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 a lot better, you know. Um, you know, with the cleanups, you know, um, it's not too crazy. I I did see some of the encampments moved. Um, it's not. I don't see it as um, you know the. Um, that bad anymore, you know, but there's more, um, we're paying more attention to now. We have these two guys um, every day, somewhere between two and three at the end of the shifts, they're, they're out there just, you know, scoping out the areas, picking up what they can. So, you know, so we want to try to avoid those calls for, for a late pickup. And um, with the trash, you know, with the trash cans, um, you know, my guy doesn't really report any, any major issues, just that one seven eleven, but, what we do, I mean, it's it's there, it's always gonna be there. So we just pick it up more than usual. I mean, it's scheduled to be picked up three times, but that one gets picked up, you know, daily. You know, so because if we leave it, it's gonna you know start overflowing and we're not gonna we don't wanna get a call or anything because it it looks bad. I mean, even though it's a report, I feel like it looks bad if we just leave it alone until somebody notices it. Well, Joaquin, we uh we appreciate your um your ability to uh, to do that, whether it's on the schedule or not. And um, obviously when we discussed it, you're gonna know much more about the trash can. So your flexibility in those matters in this one instance is much appreciated. Um, and um, you know, just your feedback on those topics are important to us. So we know, you know, maybe there's a need for another trash can close by at some future but as, uh, as long as you're aware of it and you can be flexible and do it daily, you know, we, we do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I ask just a quick question? Of course. We, we had discussed before of businesses that have trash cans in their vicinity that were using them instead of their own internal waste collection. Has there been any of that that you've seen? Any of these overflowing trash cans or from the businesses in front of the trash cans or? In the near vicinity? Yes, I mean it's still it's still the same. Like for instance, uh, one that pops into my head is the one on I believe it's Lillian getting closer to uh, Melrose. Um, there's a uh, like a, a food truck there, so they you know they use that trash can for that. Um, but none none that really stand out. I mean, my guy, to be honest with you, we just kind of like you know we're trying to follow a schedule. Um, but it's it's impossible. If we, if we leave it like that, then the on the bullet board for sure it's gonna get it's gonna start overflowing. So um, yes, we've seen it, but it's you know we're taking it out a little bit more often, so it's not too too bad on my guy anymore. But yes, we are still seeing that. Okay, and I think that food truck, I think it's in the back of Red Studios, and they kind of go out there instead of using the commissary on the mm -hmm. lot, and probably eat there and then use our, our trash can. That's, I don't know if there's much we can do about that because that's not really Brian, like you're talking about, you know, yeah, it's, no. 
with the food You're truck. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, no, that's you know, not... and we'll have to walk in. I just, I think as our businesses start coming back online, um, the environment will change a bit. And, you know, we'd love to have your feedback as, as it does change and there's more bodies walking the streets and, mm -hmm. you know, so we can stay ahead of the curve on problematic areas as far as the trash cans are concerned. And of course, any of our stakeholders that are using it in lieu of their own disposal, you know, trash cans on their own lot, then we can address that further. And as long as you identify who you believe it is, we can go by and and let them know that we, you know, that's not what those trash cans are for. But just be prepared. We, you know, we're in a down cycle as far as bodies on the streets. Um, so keep an eye on and as these things change over time, we'll change with it and adjust accordingly. Okay. Um, are there any questions for Joaquin from anybody from the board? I know China McCadden seems to kind of peak up and then. Yeah. Kind of and it's just one of those moving objects, huh? It is something I was going to bring it up during new business, but for, I guess you're getting some of the emails we're submitting. I think we're a fair number of those 11 requests. Um, I tend to have our gallery assistants submit them because we park most of the staff of the gallery park on Romaine and McCadden and then walk past apparatus um, and the rest of the businesses and Ron's property um, up to the gallery. So we kind of get a good sense of what's happening. That RV is still there, and I'm pretty certain there's a legal activity happening. The last couple of nights, it's been a big party, lots of cars driving up, going back and forth, lots of movement. Um, so that's a little concerning, a lot more movement there than there had been even before the pandemic when the RV was parked in a similar area. I've also just noticed since Monday of this week, there's been multiple tents. Um, there's even a big like event tent that someone is now living on uh, in on McCadden. And they're not coming down at all during the day. I've also noticed an uptick in tents just the last couple of days on Romaine by the school mm -hmm. since the school is closed. So if there's anything we can do in terms of like having security be present and keeping the area clean, I know we might not be able to do a ton in terms of moving the tents, but there's definitely an excess of trash and there's two abandoned cars um, that have been parked on and off at Romaine and McCadden. One I'm a little concerned might be another fire hazard issue that had happened before. So just something for us to all be aware of. Do you have yeah. cameras on that, on that site that you can in the night? I mean, our, we're close. We're at Santa Monica and McCadden, so our cameras wouldn't reach to the other end. Uh, Apparatus might have. Yeah, if there's drug dealing going on, the police will be there in no time. I would say Apparatus could have cameras. Maybe they'd be in range of Poochie. I'm not sure, um, but I know ours definitely don't reach that far. They go about as far to the alley um, between the gallery and Ron's property. Well, yeah, I think uh, drug dealing is, is, as Brian said, should get a response from our LAPD. And maybe we can ask Timothy if he's seen anything on his cameras um, at apparatus. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I mean, you see something and then by the time the, the police arrive, mm -hmm. probably that drug deal is done and mm -hmm. everybody just kind of throws up their hands. Um, but it's good to know, obviously, China, that that's happening and so we can um, talk about it and, and see if we can come to some resolution. I think this is certainly the purview of um, our safe committee initially, mm -hmm. um, but the aftermath is obviously Joaquin and, and our clean and green. Hey, um, I know what you're talking about, China, and that was the location where they had that pickup truck with the windows blown out. I think yes. that was actually being used as a, a storefront for drugs. Yeah, uh, the, that but, truck is gone, but the other truck and the RV are still there. If, I, I don't, I initially, uh, Timothy Apparatus did not have cameras on the front of their building. Mm -hmm. uh, when this problem started getting worse uh, on McCadden, I don't know, two years ago, but they may have added them since, I, and I don't know uh, about that. It's, it's a, it's a, this is a Timothy question, but if, if they have tape on uh, any of this activity, yeah, we can get the police there. And, okay, uh, I can check in with Timothy and also with Chris. 
Yeah. Um, he might know as well. Yeah, I mean, having cameras, you, you have cameras all around your property, right? We do, yes. Yeah, I mean, it's the best thing. And uh, I know my tenant has put some up too, probably not enough, but uh, they, there are some in case there's a problem right there. But uh, yeah, we should check in with Timothy. And I have mm -hmm. a, I have a uh, number for narcotics. Okay. Uh, getting a narcotics detective there is actually what you want rather than just going through the regular 911. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I've shared that number. Didn't I share that number with you, Diana, at one point? I can't remember. I shared it with somebody. Anyway, I can, I can, are you aware of that? Do you remember that, Diana? Are you muted? You're muted. You're mute. Started. Yeah. Yeah. If you could read, if you could share that again, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, I will do. You know what? You. I'm going to share. It. I'm going to share it with uh, all of the parties on McCadden, including Diana. Thank you. Great. Thanks for letting us know, China. Yeah, well, I did see uh, a number of those come up recently. Um, any other questions for Joaquin uh, and our Clean Street crew? Okay, Joaquin. Thank you very much. Appreciate. Yeah, oh, I got. I got one more, Joaquin. Okay. The area in question uh, 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 is it being cleaned? How? What's the cleanliness factor on that uh, area on the uh, on the east side of McCadden near Romaine? Near Romaine, um, we're um, my my sweeper goes in there every um, every other day. He sweeps it. We try to um, blow, but it's mostly like I, I see like maybe once or twice there there has been like trash. I mean, it's not. I personally don't think it's that bad, but getting close to that RV that they're saying and that one, there's this um, this black car there too that I've noticed. Um, I've seen two gentlemen inside. Uh, they eat and they just throw everything under their car, so it just piles up and piles up. So it's it's that general area there where she's where she's um, referring to. It's it's not that clean. Every time we go, we we're picking up a mess and um, through our regular routine and now we, we included that into our cleanups. Um, but yeah, just uh, just half of our remains clean, the closer side to Santa Monica. That's what stays a little, a little cleaner. Yeah, I would also say that's because we have um, a facilities associate on staff who's at the gallery Monday through Friday, unless he's you know on a vacation or a sick day. And he will clean up a lot of stuff around the gallery. Um, sometimes I will as well, just to do what we can to keep our clients feeling safe and our artists feeling good. Um, but I'll continue to keep a lookout and notify you guys, you know, on Ron's behalf and Gucci and apparatuses too. Okay, and before we move on, Temple, um, you're new to this uh, committee, welcome. And you also um, live and work more on our Eastern front. Um, do you have any comments regarding, number one, you should meet Joaquin. Um, he's the one and his crew cleaning up anything. But as a new board member, what's your perception of our cleanliness, especially as it pertains to your Eastern kind of boundaries of our bid? I mean, I think the, uh, the past year has really um, been a lot of change in our area. Obviously, you know, the, the, the other residential buildings on our street have been torn down. Um, I think those have been taken over by either Red Studios or a developer. They're now just sort of flat lots. Um, and so we have not seen a significant uptick in uh, tent encampments, which is, is great. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that um, the way in which when we when we initially had a, a real influx a few years ago of those uh, tent encampments, the the businesses around us and the um, the homeowners around us really banded together and, and put some put some some things in place there in the 700 block of of Coanga to really inhibit those encampments, and so we it's really remained relatively clean. I feel like that's a you know it's been a, a real success story for us because for a while there it was very very bad. And, I also think we had a we had a little bit of a leg up in some of the other areas, and we were just in the uh, the previous meeting uh, in the last hour, um, just uh, talking about parking. We had also I think a little bit of a success story in that we were able to zone our parking for uh, for permitted overnight parking, which really thinned out the RVs, uh, homeless 
you know, uh, folks that are, are living out of their, either their RV or their car. So I think that in many ways we fare better, <clears throat> but I also think some of the successes we've had could be implemented elsewhere too. Well, I was just going to ask, listen, we would love to know any of those successful programs that you and your neighbors have put together. Maybe it's something China and Tim and, and, and the others can, can understand and maybe incorporate into what they're doing. But um, please, if you could, maybe share with Diana an email and some of the things that you've done. And then we can all be in the know of, of, of some best practices that maybe we've slipped uh, a bias that we didn't uh, put into effect, but we'd love to know those. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah uh, Temple, hey, welcome to the board. And uh, I just wanna say that we've talked about uh, permitted parking uh, in meetings in the past. I don't think anything's ever been done. So congratulations for getting that done. I know dealing with the city is never easy. Thank you. Yeah, we'd love to hear more about uh, how you accomplished that. Absolutely. Okay. All right, um, any other questions or comments for Joaquin and before we let him get back into cleaning our streets? All right, Joaquin, thank you very much for all that you do. Uh, continue to, to do what you do and um, we look forward to another great report next month. All right, now and to uh, one of our, our more enjoyable um, topics here, media and landscaping. It's Christina and Eva, thank you for being on. Um, you know, we had recently a, a meeting specifically um, looking at your palette from, and, and your estimate of cost for the medians, all six of them. Um, we recently, and we will, so we're, we're, we're looking comfortable, Eva and Christina, um, from the committee's perspective of your design and patterns. We will get into it in a second as far as some art installations that China might be able to, to expand on. But um, what I think what we're looking for is a contract from you guys. We have an estimate in the palette, but a contract that we can review and go over with the full board or with the committee at least and make a decision on exactly how we're gonna proceed with you and your company. Is that something that okay. you can put together? Yeah, absolutely. I'll send over a contract based on the estimate that I sent previously. Excellent, thank you. Um, and then once we get that, Diana, we can all go over that, and Jeff and David, and, and, and make sure that you know we understand it. Um, the Hong Kong orchid trees. I, I don't know if we should get hung up on this too much. I remember that, I think it might have been Jacques or one of the other, or somebody was going to try to take down some Hong Kong orchids on Highland, not in our medians. And the answer was absolutely no. Um, but Ava, do you know, I mean, if we have some orchid trees we're not super thrilled with, have you had any experience of trying to remove trees within the city of Los Angeles and how that process might go? Uh, I removed a tree in West Hollywood and in two hours, West Hollywood was there telling me I could not remove the tree, which I already had and I needed to replant another tree. But that was West Hollywood. Okay, and so, I, I think we're pro, I don't know too much. I, all I know is that we, we mentioned that in the past and the answer was absolutely no. So, you know, I, I don't know if members, if you know if you will with them and work around them. So who was, who it was that the, said no? who told you no? Uh, that was, I mean, Ron, do you remember that we were, they were talking about that? It might have been three years ago, and it was maybe Lisa that got the, the message from the city that, I think there was 20 or so that somebody was trying to remove. They, and it, they it don't, the city doesn't want you to, to uh, we talked about this at the last meeting. Uh, the city really doesn't want you to take out trees, and there's been some pretty uh, well-documented uh, public cases of where 
uh, neighbors have tried to get rid of ficus trees. I know we have a couple on Highland ourselves. And uh, they, it, it would seem logical that they would want you to put uh, another tree in there if you had a destructive ficus, for instance. I don't, I don't, I don't recommend it. I think we're just going to be causing problems. I think at the last meeting we talked about it, and Ava said, "Let's just live with those those uh, Hong Kong orchids that are in our sixth median." Uh, that was... I can contact the city and ask them. Okay. All right. I thought you were going to do that in the last meeting, Ava. Did, was it, because we had discussed. No, it was. No, it was more a question of whether you wanted them removed or not. Well, we can vote on that now and see if we should even go further. Okay. Well, um, it's not on the agenda, is it? It's not on the agenda. Um, I, again, I'm, I mean, yeah, I guess in the best worlds, it'd be nice if, if, because they're not the most beautiful trees. But again, I think we're maybe that's a, a, a battle that we don't necessarily want to endeavor on unless even if you think you can get an answer pretty quickly like you know by next week sometime it'd be nice to know but i i just i don't want to get stuck on it it's not going to slow us up from moving forward when we are yeah. ready to do well it, in a perfect world yeah we we wouldn't want them there in the first place but i but we we had an extensive conversation about it i understand what you're saying brian but you know, it's going to be a cost to take them out. I think Ava said that, that we could live with them as long as they're trimmed properly. That's the thing of those trees. They grow like crazy. So that would be my suggestion at this point, as Thor just said, so we don't get hel held up on, on Hong Kong orchids. But okay, well, let me find if, out. If the committee they really feels like removed. they have to go, I, I think it might be an uphill battle. Okay, let me find out if they can be removed and then we know yes or no. And okay. then you guys can discuss that okay. next week. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ava. Um, so are there any other comments or questions regarding the orchids in our media, in our sixth median? Um, all right, moving on, maintenance contract. Um, we did receive a maintenance contract. Thank you, Ava, for putting that together. Um, it's a 12 month contract to continue to maintain the medians and take that responsibly, Joaquin, from your group, um, at least for, you know, it's a, it's a 12 month contract. Um, the cost of that monthly contract would be $720 a month. And in my humble opinion, um, if we're going to spend upwards of $60,000 to do the medians, and we like the last time we did them, but the upkeep just, they never matured and they never really became something that needed less upkeep. So I would be in favor, um, financially, you know, solvent uh, as we hope to be um, when we get our first tranche of the monies from the city is to is to contract with Ava and Christina to upkeep them for a, a period of 12 months. Um, I just think it makes sense because I think that's when these plants and the medians are most vulnerable. Okay, uh, is, that a motion? is that a motion, Thor? Um, it's not a motion. It's, I, I don't know if everybody got the, uh, um, this contract. So I don't know if yeah. you are looking at what I'm looking at. I mean, at this point, though, I, I thought we were just uh, basically going over all the points. So, no, I did not send it out to everybody yet. Okay. All right. But well, I, yeah. it sounds favorable. That's all I'm saying. Right. I mean, it's it, it's a pretty long long laundry list of um, of the description of work. But Ava, Christina, maybe you can just kind of sum it up for us um, and 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 why you think it would be uh, good for us to uh, contract you when as we after we well since we started working on the irrigation um and we understand what is there and we're going to be doing the planting um 
the maintenance crew is going to be fully aware of the intent and you know they're so good the guys they contact me all the time with questions about I'm not sure about this what should we do so they never go ahead and just hack back the wrong plant so I think if we maintain it it would be better than somebody else maintaining it. Well, I, I think we all agree on that. And, and from my perception here, you think that what you outlined in your agreement um, is sufficient to do the job, then, um, you know, we'll discuss this offline, but, um, you know, I'm in favor of it. And I think um, it just makes some sense um, because you're the one that are planning it. Again, you've, you've, you've worked our irrigation system. You know it, your people know it. And when these plants are young, I think they're you know, probably more vulnerable. We just lost them very quickly last time. And, um, and I don't want that to happen again. We just can't allow that to happen. So um, for the board, yeah. we do have an agreement that we can circulate after the meeting and we can all get to know a little bit more about it, but um, any uh, any questions on that front? You know, I know you haven't looked at it, but um, anything here that you guys want to talk about? All right. Well, thank you, and, and we'll get that to the rest of the board, uh, committee members so you understand the scope of the work. Um, and lastly, art installations in medians. Um, let me just kind of start with my kind of my thought about this was that we, we had talked about some some large rocks that Ava had mentioned are two or three man rocks, meaning it takes two or three people to move them. Um, and we were thinking maybe starting with one on the southern end of our most, most southern median and one on the northern end of our most northern median kind of to bookend them. And in my opinion, that would be something that would already be kind of prepped for art installation. Um, so we could find another location for those rocks in the medians and put the art there. Um, but, but that's just my thoughts. China, since you're kind of taking the lead on this, what is your concept and what can we think about when we think about art in our medians? What are, we, what are you envisioning? Yeah, I wanted us to all have this conversation because as we dive into it, there's some logistical things that come up. Um, I was just actually making some notes. I'm, I love the idea of the southernmost median, the northernmost median. I think we all kind of discussed that last time. Um, we did discuss the boulders, but something that would be really helpful from the perspective of trying to figure out what artists might work well or what kind of work could go there um, and I imagine it would have to be a sculpture since we're talking about something outdoor and it would have to be rather resistant, hardy, you know, um, not easily breakable or damageable or any of those things. What amount of space are we willing to save for artwork? And would the boulders truly be that size or smaller? Um, and just to talk a little bit more about this is typically when you're commissioning an artist to do a public artwork like this, you approach them with a proposal, you know, we would share with them the design of the landscape, what we're thinking, the location of the medians, the map, um, the dimensions of the medians, and then kind of say, you know, would you be interested? What would you propose for this? In my opinion, and I've talked with our president of our gallery as well, and she agrees, is the one drawback to going to an artist after we have a design finalized um, and we've gone all the way ahead is then you're limiting the artist because you're saying, no, I need whatever you're gonna produce to fit in this space. And they might've come up with something that we can't even imagine that could be perfect, um, but we could potentially be restraining them by not involving them sooner. Um, I'm not saying we have to involve them sooner, but it might be something for us to consider at least with the Regan Projects Gallery artists. We do have a few artists who potentially could be interested. And if everyone agreed, I'd love to kind of at least have a conversation with a few of them to see if they are interested. 
And then we kind of go from there. It could take many, many months to a year for them to even create something. Um, additionally, I love the idea of those foundations, Thor and Diana, that we were kind of all emailing about. But again, it might be premature to put in a foundation when you don't know exactly what the artwork is. If it's a sculpture, what's the material? How heavy is it? You know, a Richard Serra is made of solid steel and extremely heavy and many, many tons. Um, whereas other sculptures could be made out of fiberglass or something similar and just weigh a lot less. So just some things I want to throw out there now, um, cause I think they should be on our minds as we go through this process. Okay. Um, I, I've got a, a comment to make. It's, I, I know the rocks are being used at least in this discussion as a placeholder, but there's also the other consideration at the ends of these medians where we're considering putting them, there are also trees that are slightly in from that area. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, really, that's really the area that we have to work with. I, I don't think we're gonna move trees. So um, what we wanted to do, because we didn't want a big empty space there in the meantime, while your artist gets uh, their, their piece ready, we would put a rock there, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm imagining it might be somewhere around three feet square. Uh, I don't know, I haven't measured it, that mm -hmm. area. The, that's one comment I had. The other, the other comment, and I don't, I don't know if we're past this now, but at one point uh, the board was considering uh, a monument sign there. Now, if we wanna do art, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not uh, uh, pushing an agenda here. I'm just asking if we have shelved the idea of a monument sign saying the Hollywood Media District, or if that is still under consideration. That's question. a good question, Ron. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And that's a question for the board. Mm -hmm. I don't know, anybody else want to jump in on that one? Well, uh, I had a conversation with West Hollywood or conversation in email, and they have platforms of different sizes raised concrete platforms and if, <laughs> I'm sorry if they need something bigger I'm sure they can pour a bigger slab mm -hmm. pouring a concrete slab is not the end of the world mm -hmm. and changing the landscaping except for moving trees is not either the end of the world and moving rocks is definitely not the end of the world. Yeah. So I think if we put rocks in an area that later might hold a sculpture, whether it's five boulders that are laid out with just a few plants that are later removed, because art doesn't happen overnight. Like China said, it could take up to a year before the art gets installed. So moving rocks, is doable. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I thought maybe the boulders would be permanent. <clears throat> We'd have a permanent um, foundation somewhere for the art because, you know, we probably change the art once every year or whatever the, the board agrees to. And also this committee should look at um, a budget uh, to bring to the main board of um, what this type of sculpture art would cost uh, the board. And um, if it's not permanent, um, does the art, you know, is it make a difference to the artist that he displays it and then he, he gets it back? Um, so, because, oh, sorry, Jeff. You know, I think there's a lot of issues that this board mm -hmm. needs to address. Um, this committee, sorry. Yeah, and I just want to mention that I've started a conversation with Martha and we're adding it to our arts committee agenda to contact some of the people she and I both know downtown in the city to talk about any kind of grants, anything that might help us cover costs for installation, fabrication, um, even some sort of stipend for the artist for doing something like that. Um, in my opinion, I don't think it's worth commissioning a work, especially kind of of this scale for it not to be at least semi-permanent. I mean, doing something like this for a year cost alone and time, it, it just, it doesn't seem worth it at all. Typically, you know, an artwork in a public place would stay for a very long time. 
several All years, right, so, decades or longer. Yeah, so China on the arts committee, um, you need, you know, you guys will come up with the mm -hmm. budget and yep. uh, the idea that it's permanent. I mean, you guys are the creative people and your committee working with uh, this, um, the green committee needs to come up what we need to present to the board for yep. everyone's yeah. approval, a budget, timing, you know, everything. It's, it's a lot of work and, um, you know, we, we want to um, see if we can get this done. Yeah, we have our first meeting next week and Martha and I are, are well on our way. Um, and hopefully by the time we have this meeting again, we'll have more updates to share with everyone and, and know what might be possible. Um, I just want to get this on everyone's radar as we continue talking about the medians right. and the contracts. And then for the for your committee, Thor, the clean and green, um, we, you know, are the boulders permanent? Um, are we gonna put the art maybe in the center, uh, mm -hmm. one piece? Um, you know, we need a concrete platform. What's the cost of that? Um, we, we have a lot of issues that mm -hmm. need to be addressed and then brought to the main board. Uh, I agree, Jeff. And, and the way I've kind of envisioned it and uh, Ava, the, what, what she had mentioned is, you know, we're going to move ahead and do these medians with Ava and, and she's got a very nice way uh, 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 you know, she's, she showed us what she wants to put there and we all agree it's gonna be wonderful. And then I think because China, the timing, it would make sense. We move forward with what we have planned for Ava and rocks where she thinks they should be and whatnot. And down the line, as she mentioned, if we wanted to put a sculpture here or we wanted to put, you know, a, a median sign at the end, she can move those plants at that time. We can pour the concrete slab at that time and it will all you know, kind of work out. But I think it's kind of hard to find uh, right now, the way I'm looking at it is, you know, we don't want to hold up Ava and her design because we want to make sure that we've got the space where the space will be there even if we have to move some things around except for trees. And then as the art committee, you just kind of look at our media and say, how can we make these better with the art? And then we go from there. Uh, instead of kind of thinking about where we're gonna pour concrete slabs or, you know, we don't even know where the art's gonna be, how big it's gonna be, how heavy and anything like that. So I think it's gonna be kind of on two separate tracks, so to speak. And that's just the way I've been thinking about it. And then China, you guys are just working with, well, here's our medians you know, what can we do to beautify them? Because again, I, I agree with you. If it's, if we put an art piece in there, it should stay there for until, you know, somebody knocks it down or it gets, you know, I don't know. There's no real reason to transition those out if we just love it and it's in, in our medians. Yeah, I don't want to hold up um, working with Ava and Christina at all on the medians. I just want us all to be kind of aware of these issues. And, and it's great to have, um, Ava, it's great to have you and Christina on the phone and aware of this just, you know, I always like to mention things early just to avoid any potential issues rather than discussing them down the line when something's too late. So just so we're all on the same page. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much, China and Yak. Um, we look forward to hearing back from you and Martha from your committee and what you guys think, because I think art there would be fantastic. And um, it'll just take what Eva and Christina are doing you know, and give it that special media district touch. Um, also, Thor, um, you know, we, we might think um, with working with your committee and the arts committee, do we want a theme to suggest to the artist, like something to do with film or Hollywood or, you know, um, or just abstract, you know, what, what might be best? Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm, I, you know, our, our committee will probably just follow the lead up of the art and everybody <laughs> knows what's going on here. We'll talk so, about it, Jeff. <laughs> guys are the right. experts. Just, I'm just trying to throw out ideas yeah. because mm -hmm. your committee, um, China and Martha has been dead for this year, last year because I of know. COVID and now we want to activate it. And, I know. and um, Clean and Green is getting active now with this. So we got a lot of good things going for the bid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, Christina and Ava, thank you very much. Um, we will be in touch with you shortly and uh, please put together um, that proposal for us to uh, agreement so we can look it over and, uh, and we'll be back to you. Perfect, thank you so much. 
Thank you, Taylor, very much. Thank Have you. Have a great weekend. Um, Bye. All right, trash receptacles. Um, we talked a little bit about those already. Um, just, you know, to keep everybody aware, I think, uh, Joaquin, I don't have the exact numbers, Diana, but it was like 17 of our trash cans needed some paint and some touch up. And then there was another handful or so that needs to be replaced at some point in time. And there were three different liners. Um, is that about accurate? We've got some work to do on some of these cans, correct? Correct, right. And um, I, we do have the whole list of, and where they're located and how many need to be repaired. Or, and, and for the most part, it's repainted, you know, so some of them are, are just kind of banged up and could just look better if we, if we chose to do that. And then there were, I think there was one can that one receptacle outer that actually needed to, it needs to be replaced. In the, um, in the spirit of trying to keep it as consistent as possible, do we have like, out of, let's say there's 90, do we have 70 that are look this way and then a few that look a, diff, a bit different or are we kind of mixed and matched? Because obviously whatever we have the most of and the most recent, we're gonna wanna keep going with that design. Right. The, for the most part, we do have the red receptacles. Um, we do have four different types of receptacles. And I, I have to pull up the list to, I, I can send it to you. I don't have it on hand, but I do have the information. Well, the, the, the metal ones, the heavy duty ones, Diana, are, are the ones that we actually own. And we, since we are worried about cleanliness, we, um, we clean everybody's. I mean, some of them are bus stop trash receptacles and, and some of them are, I'm not sure the wire ones, whether they were left by the city or where they came from. Uh, I know we clean them all, but uh, I think if we put in new ones, we would put in the, uh, I don't know what to call them, the, the heavy duty, the rote ones that are red, used to be green, um, receptacles. And uh, uh, have you had any problem with those? Uh, Joaquin. Joaquin, yeah. No, not at all. Just some, some of them are, are a little banged up. Um, so they just need paint then. Yeah, yeah, it just needs to um, get painted up. But there is one that I believe I sent you guys an email um, a couple of weeks ago, and that one's completely trashed. Yeah, that's the one that's it's it was like hit by a car or something. Yeah, that one's completely yeah. gone. I mean, I don't think we'll be able to put that one back. But um, so other than that, we couldn't fix it. We we need a new trash can. In other words. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the rest of them, they're just banged up pretty much. I I, I just feel like maybe like a little touch up, they'll be fine. You know. Um, I mean, if you repaint them, I mean, they're like brand new. You know, they're, they're not that bad. Aren't they repainted about a year and a half ago? Think Didn't so. we have that work done? Probably. Yeah, I remember that we had some yeah, of those. I, I can't imagine they'd be so banged up. I mean, the one that's hit by the car, fine, that happens. Um, you know what, we, I, I did pass out at the last board meeting the condition of all the trash cans. I have to pull it back up and I will, I can forward it back out. But we have photos of all, and, and locations where all the banged up trash cans are and what they look like. And, you know, so we could take a look back at that, I guess at our ne next meeting and decide. I thought they had been powder coated and they yeah. were in very good shape when they came back. But I, the amount of abuse, I guess, is. Yeah. yeah. There, there's, I think there were 55 of them that needed repainting or something like that. It was a large number. Well, I, you know, in my opinion, we need to re fix or replace the one that got hit by a car and the other ones, probably something we might want to look to do. I mean, I don't think they look so bad that that it's a blight to our community. Um, and since we still don't know about, you know, how much revenue we're going to get, you know, once we do get it, um, you know, I we might want to find out, Diane, if there's, I think there was somebody that painted them for pretty cheap, Ron. I don't know if you remember the guy's name. We should yeah. have. Him. Was it, it was the, the fellow that did the metal work too, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. The, the welder? The guy yeah. That welded? Didn't he yeah. do the painting? Didn't he get them out to be powder coated? I thought. That, that was my impression, but I, I don't know if he's gonna, if you're going to send them out. 
I don't know if we had them powder coated, Brian, because uh, you, you got to send that out. You can't do it. Yeah, on the yeah, yeah. No, it's a. It had to go to another paint shop or to a paint shop. Yeah, the new ones came to us powder coated. Yeah, but they got beat up. Yeah. I, and, well, let's and look into the question. What, what the cost would be to buy just a couple of uh, trash cans, Diana? As I recall, they were six or eight hundred dollars a pop. No, yeah. they're they're almost a thousand now. Um, I I will get another quote from a different. Um, it was Victor Stanley I got the quote from, and it's about like nine fifty for one of those round receptacles for the red one. Um, we have approximately twenty two trash receptacles that need paint service. I'm looking at the list. The original company that we bought the very first batch from has or had a sale in January or February or March of every year where it was really worthwhile to buy a few. I can't remember the name of that company, but. Oh, okay. Well, I can research some other companies and, you know, that's the one that I found our exact receptacle. So, but you know, I'm sure there's another one. Um, David had mentioned one other company to me. So I will get another quote for that, but we do have 22 red trash cans that need to be touched up and- Okay, you know, okay. Uh, why, don't we, why don't we talk to Clean Street about, about painting them? We don't need to hire a welder to paint them. Right, right. right. I, um, I think Joaquin and I had talked about it briefly, um, but they can, you know, Rick can give us a quote. Okay. Yeah, that, I think that would make the most sense. So, I mean. Right, and then I, I have it up on my screen, but there is one that was really was hit by a car or something, or, you know, and it's it's pretty banged up. Well, like Brian says, if you, you know, if you can get two or three and they get them for 500 or $400 each, that okay. would make sense to have a couple on. Sure, I'll, uh, I'll check it out and see if I can find a lower price. Um, and then we also had uh, recommendations for 10 other locations where the security officers found that uh, trash, there was a large amount of trash that piled up all the time that if we had trash can receptacles in those places, it would be helpful. Yeah, would you, would you agree with a number like that, uh, Joaquin? Like we could use 10 more just randomly, more or less? Well, it's not random, though. It is the well. I know, I know, but he, 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 this is maybe new news to him. You're saying the the uh, security team came up with the list, right? right. Is um is this would this be around like encampments then, or or what specific? Um, well, I do have the locations. What you know, I could read them. The southeast corner, Formosa Avenue in Romaine. The okay. northeast corner of Form Formosa and Willoughby. 9110 North Orange, 1015 North Mansfield, Southeast corner of Romaine and Las Palmas, 6904 Lexington, Southwest corner Melrose and Hudson, the Southwest corner of Melrose and Coanga, the Southeast corner of Coanga and Waring, and the Southeast corner of Cole and Waring. I'm not sure if those are encampment locations or not. Okay. One of them does sound um, the one on Cahuenga, I believe, in Melrose. Um, that one there in the corner is just, uh, there is a lot of, um, it's, it, it, there's never an encampment, but there is uh, an individual there, you know, created a mess most of the time. It's just like a lot of bunch of loose trash in the, right in the corner. Right. And I, as soon as I will forward this map back off to everybody that shows um, areas where we, where future bins are recommended and you know and damaged bins it's all it's all color coded and, and labeled out for you well yeah i I'd, I'd like to get joaquin's recommendation before we start sure. talking about you know our security because if you know if there's a can that keeps like it's a 7-eleven trash can if that gets keeps overflowing maybe something proximate to that makes sense but just because there's not a can on a corner and it's not dirty all the time then why put one there, right? They may well become a magnet for trash too. Excuse me? I say they may well be a magnet for trash. Yeah, they could be. So in other I, words, if I'd it's there, not, fill it up. I'd rather, yeah, I'd rather not just uh, obviously purchase these trash cans and then just screw them about because we don't have one there. If we need one, we want to put one there. If we don't need one, then. Well, I don't not. think a homeless encampment is 
quite the proper place to be placing trash cans. That shouldn't dictate no, where should. they go. No, but the other, you know, and I know that in the in the safe meeting it was mentioned, but we, you know, they the the unhoused residents are asking for garbage bags, and we are passing out garbage bags, and they are willingly putting their trash in the garbage bags. Not everybody. This is something that we just started. Um, so we're passing out garbage bags, and there's a few. Oh, you know that, that that's a discussion. Maybe we should have whether we uh, decide the hot spots for trash cans should go near homeless encampments. I mean, what what's what's better, having a trash can there or having it on the street? I mean, maybe that's a question for Joaquin, and I'm sure he'd say he'd rather have it in a trash can. I know we're spending money, you know, up to perhaps nine hundred dollars for a trash can there. Uh, on the other hand, we're trying desperately to keep this district clean, I think, more than anything. So I would say it's a priority for us to have these cans out there, if they're needed, if Joaquin says they're needed. That's all. Anybody? My opinion, I believe maybe the, the main boulevard should always have more if you guys plan. I mean, not all those 10 should go there, but maybe an extra four won't hurt. I believe but you know, stands out more, you know, having some, some more on Santa Monica or, or Highland. Um, the little side streets in, in particular, um, from my experience, uh, it's it's true uh, what Brian's saying, it's just a magnet. Um, you you add certain locations, it just brings more like, uh, they're, they're always gonna wake, um, be there full. Um, yeah. residents they, start move, they move around too. So you might, yeah. you might have a really bad encampment and then for one reason or another, it moves to another street and you don't have a trash can. You know, and they're bolted down. You know, we all know that, right? The, the yeah. ones we put in. Yes. Uh, well, it's you know, a moving target. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think Joaquin, we're gonna, we're gonna lean on you, mm -hmm. where you think that we could use another trash can. If not, let's let's just paint them. Let us know how much it would be for your guys just to paint them up and touch them up. We got to replace the one that got damaged. But other than that, I'd rather. You know, if you think and your crew thinks, you know, we could really use one here. I, and I'm along those lines of, of Santa Monica and Highland make a lot more sense. Um, you start putting trash cans everywhere and, you know, the trash will find it and problems might, you know, continue or, or exacerbate because of that. So let's, uh, let's let Joaquin and his crew, you know, guide us on that um, as far as where he thinks we could use another placement or two. Um, and then, you know, we can, we can buy those at that time, but I don't think, uh, obviously, since we bolt them down, we can't chase the, the uh, unhoused community around the area. Handing them garbage bags, Joaquin, if you think that works, that's great. I remember the city had, I think it was called the pink bags, or they were going to have a different color and hand them to the homeless. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that ever got off the ground, but um, if they're using them and you're handing them to them, then yeah, by all means, if, it makes your job easier and it makes our district cleaner. Um, you know, but it, it's it's a it's a work in progress. I, I feel like the mess is still gonna be there, but it is um what they're doing now is that um they do ask us for for bags and when we do hand them out, either us or our security team, um they pile it up across, like not in the encampment, direct in the encampment. So it's easier for us to just go and grab. It's they they put it away where you know we don't have to actually be inside the encampment looking for stuff, you know, possibly getting in trouble for it or anything. So they they bag all their trash and they put it somewhere else. It's a little easier, but we still run with, you know, it's not always it, it doesn't always work for us. But you know, when it does it's it makes makes it a lot easier for us to pick it up. Well I think that's just part of our communicating with that environment and those people there. Uh, and it's necessary. You know, and until you see a bunch of trash bags just flying down the street and you know it's the one you just handed the guy, you know, if they're using them for trash, great. If they're using them, you know, maybe it's raining and they put it on themselves. Well, that's okay too, you know. Um, plastic ponchos. Plastic ponchos. So, yeah, why don't you, you know, let us know how much it would take to paint the 22 that we need to paint. And, uh, you know, Diane, if you can look into sure. what that Brian had mentioned that, I, and I recall that too, Brian, where there was some kind of a deal at a certain time at the beginning of the year. Um, I'm sure there's some kind of uh, information like that that's saved and archived. And 
and that computer. I wish I could remember the name, but I, I'm afraid there might well be a minimum also. I will absolutely check it out. Okay. Thank you, Diana. Mm -hmm. All right, any other comments on trash cans and receptacles? Yeah, um, I have one, Thor. Um, will you guys also want to replace your logos? Um, some of them are, you know, not all of them are damaged, but, you know, um, just if you guys want to start ordering some logos for the, for the trash cans, you know, new ones always stand out too. Oh, yeah, good idea. We, I thought we had a, a supply of those. Diana, do you? I, I haven't personally seen them. We would have to order new ones, right? Uh-huh. But I, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, Jim probably threw them out. Yeah. yeah. Is that just something that you've... you've, you've yeah, it's a, it's, it's a sticker. It's a sticker. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and get, get some new ones because we can always use them and then maybe obviously um, do it in coincidentally with, uh, with the painting of the 22. And if they need one, boom, you put it on. I don't know if you can cover old ones, if, but we should have those around, some stickers like that, that we can quickly do a, a patch job. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't be too expensive. Okay, thanks, Joaquin. Appreciate that. Um, any old business from the committee? Well, just quickly, is, is uh, Avis, is this Christina still in this meeting on the phone? I think Christina's phone is still, I don't know if she's on it. Christina? No, they both. That's Mackenzie. Yeah, they both left. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. That's Mackenzie. The my the only thing I can say is that maintenance price is a deal and a half. Seven hundred dollars a month for those mediums. My gosh, grab it, red. I, yeah, I. Oh, I do agree. I made a motion. I, I tried to second it right away. <laughs> I I I thought it'd be around two grand to be honest with you. Maybe a little less, but that's that's a lot of uh, a lot of bang for your buck in that deal. No, because we, that's we so know, important. We know a deal when we it. see one, right? Gosh. And, and what I what I most like about it, obviously, I saw that I was surprised, like you were, Brian. But you know, they're planning it. They're they've repaired our our irrigation. It's really good to have them upkeep it at least until we feel comfortable. It's kind of upkeeping itself. With whether that time comes or not, I don't know, but at least for the first year, it seemed like a really good bargain. And that gets Joaquin's guys off the medians. They can, you know, focus on, on what they're doing, but I agree. Well, these are so, plant people yeah. that would be administering to the, to, to, to the, I mean, it's just, yeah. it's, it's yeah. very, 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 very desirable. Yeah. So Diana, just remind yourself to send that to the committee so they can look at that. Um, Absolutely. Okay. And, um, and she believes this is what is sufficient for them to maintain the medians. And yeah, it makes it makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think you'll have any problem getting a vote. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Sounds like that. All right. Um, any other old business? Any other new business? Um, Temple, we're, we're thrilled to have you. Um, hopefully Welcome you to the club. And uh, the rest of the committee, thanks for being around. China, thanks for everything you are doing with the arts com uh, committee. And Joaquin, you know, you've, you've changed our lives. Um, so uh, <laughs> we all appreciate that. And, uh, you know, have a great weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl. And uh, we'll all, you know, look forward to some more information coming from Ava from Diana, um, really focused on the medians. And uh, Jeff, thanks for being involved with this and keeping your eye on what we're doing. All right. Thanks, All right. Uh, Thank you guys. Bye-bye. 307. All right. Thank you. Bye. Take care.